So you can, yeah. you can ballast this tractor up to 38 tonne. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. It works out about 47 kilos per horsepower yeah. rated. Folks, hello, welcome along. In this episode, you join us in northern Germany because we are out here with John Deere, who is showing off its brand new, I suppose you could call it now, the large frame John Deere 9RX articulated four track tractor. So, this is a bit of a first impression, a bit of a walk around. So, I think what we'll do is because We've got a lot to talk about, as you can imagine, because it is, it's an all new machine. Yep. So I think what we'll do is we'll split it into two little episodes. So in this first episode, we'll get the walk round, courtesy of Mr. Thomas Lloyd here from uh, John Deere UK. And then in the second sort of episode, in the second part to this, we'll jump in the cab and we'll actually drive this machine and see what's what. Yep. So on. that is the plan. So without further ado, we'll dive in. So Thomas, Yep. Like I said, it's a brand new tractor, isn't it? Yep. There's hardly anything shared on this with the current 9RX, which tops out, is it the 640? 640, yeah. So that's yeah, 691 horsepower max. And like I said, this is a completely new tractor from the ground up, completely different concept. There's hardly a part shared really between the two tractors, to be right. quite honest. Um, <clears throat> so this is the range topping model. So this is 9RX 830. So in the family then now, what have you got like in the, I suppose you could say, the small frame and this new large frame? Yeah, so in the kind of smaller, younger brother, if you like, we've got the 490 up to the 640. So going up in 50 horsepower increments. Yeah. And then now for this new model, we've got three models. So we've got a 710, a 770 and an 830. Yeah. And of course, as usual with John Deere tractors, that's the rated power on the bonnet. So for example, this top model here, although it says 830 on the bonnet, it's actually topping out at 913 horsepower. So right, so 830, that's your rated power, yep. as normal with all your models, pretty yep. much. Yep. And then your max power, which is pretty much when the revs die back, yep. hit that peak power bulge. Yep. This will be what, 913? 913, yeah. So once you get this, so once you get down to about 1600 RPM, this is a low revving engine. So yeah. it rated speed on this engine is 1900 RPM. Yeah. So that's where you'll be at your 830. And then as you drop down to about 1600, you'll be at 913 horsepower. <laughs> and that's really, that's its happy place. That's where you sort of want yeah, to pull it down to. That's where it? you want to be. That's where, where it's happy, just trundling right. along all day. And yeah. what's your peak torque on this as well? Because that's got to be some big figure on it on this. Yeah, it's pretty mind blowing to be honest. So yeah. 4,234 Newton meters at the engine. Right, so, so <laughs> roughly translated boys and girls, it's got some grunt. It's got a bit of yeah. pork about it. Right, so. As we mentioned a couple of times already, it's a brand new tractor. It now, is. talk us through one of the big key differences with this, because your current range, they are currently, they're a, they're a frame design, yeah. aren't they? Everything sits in the frame, a bit yeah, like yeah. six R's basically. Yeah, Whereas this, concept. this is, is completely structural, so it's got a complete cast structural chassis basically, front to back, <clears throat> so everything, as you can see here, so engine's cradled, cradled within this cast here, and it's cast fully front to back. That's cast there, yep. and like I say, if we move sort of back here, that's bolted onto gearbox down there somewhere, that's all cast. And then back here, like I said, big uh, cast pivot point in the middle, and then all cast back end as well. So yep. no frame, it's literally no just frame. all cast components bolted together. All structural, together. all load bearing, yeah. And right. yeah, key reason for that really is traction. So see, there's a minimum amount weight you really need to be able to get the power down to the ground yeah and with a frame you're quite limited in terms of ballasting options whereas with the structural the whole tractor is ballast then at that point isn't yeah. it really so if you want to be able to get the power down to the ground you need about 45 kilos per horsepower right. rated for kind of medium tillage yeah so you've got a lot of inbuilt yeah. ballast basically a little bit much, of inbuilt yeah. weight like yeah, yeah. yourself yeah <laughs> don't need to add much to me uh, and with that, I suppose, I mean, as we're kind of looking around it, and as we'll go into detail in a bit, it leaves your spot sort of more space to arrange your components as well. Yeah, another big thing, yeah, manoeuvrability. Obviously, a tractor of this size, if you've got a frame, you're limited then on turning angles and stuff. Yeah. Whereas with a structural chassis, you can take out bits to make it narrower in certain points, so you can add to other bits if you want to 
mess about with the weight distribution a bit. Right. So it gives you a lot more flexibility then in terms of the actual yeah. char characteristics of the machine okay. really when you're driving it. So you can make a really sort of narrow point here. Yeah. 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 That's the idea. That's it. And this, I mean, while we're studying as well. This, I mean, the way you've got your sort of track layouts and things like that, and the way it's sort of bolted together, the tracks are bolted to the size of the tracks, aren't they? Yep. They're not across an axle, which nope. can do, you know, left, right yep. movement. That's all done here at the pivot point. Yeah, so there's a big pivot point down the middle here. Yeah. And then, yeah, the actual axles themselves are fixed. Track units, there's some pivot in the track units, yeah. so front to back, um, but side to side, they're fixed. Right, so that pivot point that Chris is looking at now, that's where it twists, effectively. Yeah, so another key, well, another big, big point to this tractor is the engine, of course. So any tractor of this size, you've got to start with the engine, haven't you? You have a big motor, haven't so you? So <laughs> I'll get the engine, I'll get the hood open, maybe. Just stay, excuse like, the stay. agricultural... Uh, you, uh, you port that, and yeah. uh, am I expecting something ridiculously heavy? No, no. Oh, no. It's, uh, they've thought of that. There you go. So, starting off with the engine, so... So people that are familiar with foragers are probably quite familiar with the engine maybe, so yeah. launched a couple of years ago, 18 litre JD18X engine, so it's a six cylinder in So that's six. the same motor that's in like the 9700, 9600 yeah. and 9500 as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. foragers? Yep. So it's the same engine, obviously it's tuned differently, yeah, it's slightly. but it's the same, same motor. Lock, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. So that's your big 18 litre yeah. unit. Yeah, and so that's, that's developed in conjunction with... Lieber is it? That yeah, so it's John Deere built, so it's built in Engine Works over in Waterloo, but it yeah. was developed, yeah, kind of in cooperation really with Lieber. Key selling point really for this engine is add blue, you know, we all put up with it, we're not, <laughs> we're not necessarily happy about it. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. But this tractor is able to meet emission standards without any add blue, same as the foragers, so obviously from a usability, from a customer perspective, that's fantastic. But um, I assume because it's at a certain size, a certain power, yeah. it doesn't need to meet certain... Pre yeah, precisely, yeah. So 560 kilowatts or about 750 horsepower, max, not rated. Yeah. The regulations are different, so you can have a bit more of an allowance for particulates in the exhaust gas, basically. Right. So... So these don't need to be as strict, you might say. So you don't need to have the much, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't need def. Not, on the, not for right. us, at least, yeah. Cooling package. Cooling package, Monster. yeah. Monster. Absolute beast. <laughs> <laughs> cooling package, yeah. So, kind of what they've done here is rather than having a stacked, thick cooling package, they've gone for the larger, that, like, area. Yeah. Um, basically, benefit of that is you need less air draw through it. Yeah. Um, per so minute, keep, essentially. So, keeping it wide, yeah. keeping it tall, but keeping it thin, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the plan, that's what they've sort yeah. of gone for. Yeah, that's right? the kind of So, concept maximum of it. airflow, max, yeah. yeah. Maximum draw through it, you might say. Yeah. Right. Um, and then moving behind, so obviously cooling in the field. This tractor's going to be in the field for long days. Uh, we've got a new fan, so it's a hydraulic driven fan on this machine. Uh, and then you can see that valve block there. Yeah. Um, so there's a solenoid in that valve block, so you can actually reverse the fan. And it actually fully starts rotating in the opposite direction. It doesn't change the kind of pitch of the veins if you right, like. Right, so this is a genuine reverse it action. Genuinely reverses, right. yeah. Is this kind of like what you got on the combines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. very similar to what's on the right. X9, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's operated through the display. Yeah. You can either have it on a timer or obviously you can manually if you need it. That's it, and then obviously maintenance is going to be key on a machine like this, especially yeah. around the engine area. Yeah, yeah. What have you certainly. done to help that on a sort of daily basis? Obviously, big benefit of having a new tractor from the ground up is that you can really tailor it for making it easy. Another big benefit for us, obviously, built and designed in America, it's built for the larger gentleman. The larger, the larger sort the of point. chap, yeah. So <laughs> we only have three daily grease points, so th three 10 hour grease points. As you can see there, there's a nice little compartment to get into the engine base. You've got your dipstick and oil yeah. level there. And the idea with this is really they can do all the daily maintenance from the ground. Yeah. So everything's completely accessible from the ground. You can get into the engine bay there. So you can check, filter. Your, check your oil level there. Yeah. Air filter's here, like say, at ground level. Air filter here. You've got your gauge for the coolant just above the engine, uh, okay. just above the steps there. Chris can sneak up there. Yeah. So that's coolant level there. Again, so we can see that from down the ground. here. Yeah. Right. Fuel tank here. So obviously you'd be quite comfortable reaching that tank. I'm all right, yeah, yeah. that's all right. Uh, got a nice little step for those who might not be. Down here as well, so there is an option for a fast fill on this tank, which yeah. you may require. Um, so this tractor could actually carry 1,952 litres of fuel. It's capable of carrying over 1,900 yep. litres. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. 
And like I say, you've got your, well, you can have an option of a fast fill, which yep. you just plug in there. Yeah, yeah. How fast will it fill? So it'll do, it'll do the full tank in under four minutes. Yeah. So the caveat is you do actually need a pump that can deliver 570 litres a minute of diesel. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be careful <laughs> yeah. of doing that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's the only kind of caveat to that. Um, but yeah, it's an option. And then on top of that, so everything's visible. As you can see, you've got the sight gauge down here for the back end. So that's back end oil, that one. Back end oil, right. yeah. And then up just above up Chris there. there, we've got hydraulic oil. Yeah, so that leads to the next point, really. So this has a split reservoir. Yeah. So the kind of working oil, if you like, is separate from the gearbox and the back end oil. Um, what that gives us actually is, so on the working oil, if you like the implement oil, you get 4,000 hour service interval.